and uh, paper number 1531 uh, ms pinky sha and paper number 1536 mr sudesh they are the presenter in this session uh, sir if you permit then we can uh, start to it uh, if there is no other issue because uh, I would take permission uh, from also the first presenter if you permit also because according in, in accordance with the schedule the first presenter 1525 is the first presenter Dipayan if yes. you have any problem yes. then, sir, I have no problem he can continue okay then Mr. Tonumoy Banerjee will present on numerical analysis on micro scale diffusion frame structure using methane as a fuel. So this type of work previously has been done by many of the researchers earlier. So this methane air mixture. So I uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor Jyotirmoy Banerjee to present your paper, please. Don't know my Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving me, me the opportunity to present uh, first because here there is no power so that, that's why I, I have requested you thank you so much uh, so, so is my screen visible no please say uh, yeah. hello yeah now it's now it's visible, now it's visible. Sir, sir is my okay thank you sir Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, respected professors. Uh, my name is Sonoma Banerjee. Uh, my uh, paper uh, name is uh, Numerical Analysis of Microscale Diffusion Flame Structure Using Methane Gas as Fuel. And this paper is uh, co authored by Professor uh, Nipen Mondal, who is also a professor of Jogger uh, Recovery Engineering College in Mechanical Engineering Department. So, uh, this is the index of my presentation. Uh, so, uh, I'll talk about the abstract and then, then a micro flame uh, feature. Then, as well as the numerical uh, model and the applied numerical scheme, then governing equation, and then the results and conclusion, and after that, the re references that I have used. So, first, uh, the abstract, uh, because uh, here uh, we have basically uh, modeled, we have done some comparison on the microscale frame for different fuel exit velocity, height, and substructure by, by varying the velocity of the exit uh, methane flow rate inside the domain. The results that we have uh, done that predicts the flame height as well as the shape according and we have done some uh, some thermal analysis regarding the total heat conducted from the numerical domain for different flow velocity uh, ranging from 1.2 meter per second to 5.15 meter per second of uh, exit methane flow rate and we have also done some uh, mass flow rate comparison for uh, methane flow velocity of uh, 1 meter per second and 2.5 meter per second and we have also done some uh, we have also done uh, some uh, the, uh, some uh, heat conduction and heat convection analysis for uh, center and radial and, and axial direction along the uh, along the flow domain. Next, uh, the the feature of microflame it is microflame is basically governed by two non-dimensional number. Uh, the first one is the fire number, which is basically the inertial ratio of uh, inertial uh, in, inertial force with uh, gravitational force, and and also the peclet number. Uh, here, uh, uh, for the fire, for the micro flame, as the uh, if the velocity of the exit fuel uh, exit fuel uh, is uh, of the order of uh, meter uh, of the order of one uh, meter per second or 0.1 meter per second, then then we have we can negate the gravity effect because of uh, because the denominator comes out as negligible than the numerator. And also here, the particular number is also of the order of one, which which uh, means that the characteristic flow time is somewhat comparable to the diffusion time. And the volumetric flow rate that uh, from the jet that comes out uh, from the from the burner port, which is sufficiently uh, very small, so the volumetric flow rate is higher because the burner port is is sufficiently small. Uh, here we the numerical model and applied numerical scheme. Uh, here I have uh, put in the schematic of the numerical model and the boundary condition along with it. Uh, we have used the uh, the time dependent ordinary uh, ordinary polymer conservation equation for the fluid dynamics. Uh, there are basically uh, four equations that that we all know: the mass, momentum, and energy conservation equation. As well as here we are we are considering the species conservation equation. Uh, 
and uh, we, we have solved it using a finite, uh, finite volume method in a staggered grid system because uh, staggered grid predicts the pressure variation well in comparison with the body centered uh, in comparison with the body centered grading system and we have also used the axisymmetric uh, axisymmetric domain because the z is all, uh, z is considered as axisymmetric with respect to the z axis uh, we have used uh, uh, the uh, methanary champion file for uh, calculating the transport chemistry and uh, for the uh, chemical reaction and the central differencing scheme uh, and all the implicit method is used for time integration method and the we have uh, the burner that we have uh, used to from where the methane is getting uh, ejected into the into the numerical domain is fixed at uh, diameter of 0 0.4 meter per second and fuel exit velocity is uh, can considered varying from uh, 1.2 meter per second to 5.1 meter per second and the entire region uh, is taken as 40 d d is basically the diameter of the burner port and uh, and the stretched mesh and uh, as well as the mapped fish mapped uh, mesh uh, is used to uh, discretize the entire domain now uh, it, it is uh, shown that the geometrical model is uh, somewhat like this and the second picture uh, is basically the unstructured uh, grid that uh, that we have considered and the third picture is basically the structured grid, grid body centered grid uh, for our analysis so here are the governing equations that uh, we all know for the uh, it is basically given uh, on the conservative form the mass conserv uh, in, in the conservative form the mass conservation equation and the momentum conservation equation is basically the generalized neighbor stokes equation uh, and the last term here is basically the gravity term that we have considered it and t t is basically capital t is basically the stress tensor part which is basically considering with uh, the, uh, the normal stress as well as the deviatoric stress tensor part the energy conservation equation and stasis conservation equation are given here in the energy conservation omega is basically the uh, mean reaction rate and lambda is basically the diffusion coefficient uh, used for our analysis now the boundary conditions uh, that we have applied we have applied the far field boundary condition on the open boundaries that we have shown in the earlier figure uh, like uh, here in the numerical domain we have used far field boundary condition on the on the outer uh, region open boundary regions and uh, no slip no, no catalytic reaction is used uh, catalytic reaction is used and temperature is uh, fixed at a bar, at the burner surface is kept fixed uh, and methane exit uh, exit velocity is given from the burner port which is basically the velocity inlet is uh, taken uh, normal gravity is basically considered for an external force and we have we have done the grid independence test with a grid size of d by 10 and d by 20 two, two separate grids we have done grid independent test for burner port as well as in the entire domain and our calculation started with initial step of 10 to the minus 6 and then, then it goes on uh, until the steady state is, is reached uh, it, it is basically the uh, first we have done the some analysis with the existing literature uh, the dash line basically gives the uh, numerical results of our analysis which is basically the time, the time average solution and the discrete points that uh, that uh, he, he have plotted in the graph of uh, non-dimensional flame height versus exit methyl flow velocity is basically the result from the experiment done by the Nakamura paper that we have considered for our analysis uh, and it is basically done for different flow velocities ranging from 1.2 meter per second of emission flow velocity to 5.15 meter per second and the outer contour of the uh, reaction rate is considered uh, outer contour of the flame height is basically where the reaction rate comes out as, as 0 0.001 gram per semi cube per second. It is basically considered as the outer uh, outer contour of the reaction. Now the flame structure and characteristics here uh, we have done some analysis on the center axis and uh, along the axial direction of the temper uh, of our uh, in our domain to calculate the temperature and the oxidizer and methane flow rate. I mean, methane uh, mass fraction uh, for different uh, methane exit flow velocity of 1 meter per second and 2.5 meter per second from the burner port. Here we can see uh, that uh, here we can see that uh, from uh, for uh, methane flow velocity of 1, 1 meter per second, the maximum temperature reached is uh, somewhat uh, 200 uh, 200 Kelvin higher than the uh, methane flow velocity of 2.5 meter per second. So it basically matches with the result uh, that, that that is done in the paper that we have 
considered for our analysis. So it closely satisfies with it. Next, we have done some uh, comparison of uh, species conservation, uh, sp separate species that is getting formed in the numerical domain. And it is also done for different uh, two different flow velocities of 1 meter per second and 2.5 meter per second. Here uh, on the uh, on the CO curve means the carbon monoxide curve. We can see that uh, on the left left figure and as well as on, in the right figure, uh, there are two peaks uh, arising in the uh, carbon monoxide uh, uh, curve, which shows that there are basically two combustion zones in the uh, in, in the numerical domain. And it is, as we all know that is carbon monoxide is produced due to the non stoichiometric combustion and as well as the air entanglement near the quenching zone. So, yeah, but and for the left figure, we can see that the two quenching or two, uh, two combustion zones are very close. And, and for the emission flow rate of 2.5 meter per second, the two quenching zone is somewhat distant from each other, which means that the that some that uh, non non premixed combustion is occurring between the uh, for the two combustion zone outer in the outer layer. Uh, yeah, uh, so this all I, I have uh, told, and here we have uh, done the uh, heat conduction uh, heat conduction analysis mean total heat conduction for different uh, fuel exit uh, velocity, and here we have, we can see that uh, for uh, as we go along uh, to in increasing the increase of fuel exit velocity, the radial heat conduction is getting higher uh, than the axial heat conduction, and the difference is getting uh, getting increased for the uh, for high, higher fuel exit velocity. And, and this is basically the uh, different type of contours that we have formed for different uh, for for those two velocity. Uh, of uh, one meter per second and two point and two uh, one meter per second and uh, two point five meter per second of methane flow velocity. And here from the uh, from the last diagram, last curve of uh, uh, of a velocity con velocity uh, vector, we can see that the velocity uh, velocity vector for low fuel rate is basically higher than the velocity vector for uh, for high fuel rate, high fuel velocity. Uh, so velocity vector uh, is higher for the left one, and velocity vector is le lesser for the right one because uh, because of uh, there are three phenomena that is working uh, consistently here of thermal expansion and low inertia number flow, and also the buoyancy effect is higher on the uh, right side of the figure. So the velocity vector is getting uh, reduced, and uh, we have also uh, found out that the flame edge uh, temperature is lower by at least 200 Kelvin. An additive flame temperature, which which also matches with the Nakamura paper, and 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 there is a sharp decrement of 30 to 35 to 40 percent of length of numerical domain of oxygen concentration gradient for a low methane flow rate than the high methane flow rate that we have considered here. So now the conclusion of my study is uh, when uh, when we have considered the uh, methane flow velocity in the range of uh, one to two point five meter per second, there is very less buoyancy effect. So a kind of semi spherical shape of uh, flame can be formed, and we have also found uh, found out the linear dependency of non non dimensional flame height with different exit methane flow rate, and that is also uh, matched closely with the paper that we have considered. Uh, the numerical calculation properly validates with the experimental results of the Nakamura paper, and but there are some uh, discontinuity uh, with the paper work because there are uh, they they considered some higher uh, or higher order chemical kinetic model. Uh, and but we have considered two uh, at least one uh, one chemi one uh, one step methane uh, air uh, mixture. So there are some discontinuity at the flame edge. Uh, and uh, from various chemical concentration uh, gradient and uh, temperature uh, and thermal analysis at uh, separate fuel flow rate along the axial and radial direction, we have considered that uh, there are uh, the, the temperature gradient is sharper for methane flow rate. Though maximum temperature is lower for higher methane flow rate of 2.5 meter per second. So this is the main conclusion that we have drawn from our paper. And this is the these are the reference that I have used for my presentation and for, for our paper. Thank you. Thank you for your nice presentation.
then this session is uh, open for audience. If you have any question, please from the audience side. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Voice? Yes, sir. I can hear you. So you are you are doing the mathematical analysis of methane flame, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why you are doing that? Uh, so basically, microflame analysis is. Uh, I am doing microflame analysis uh, because it is uh, somewhat useful in in microgravity condition in space uh, where there is uh, yeah. One more thing, you just can show me uh, your graph, uh, figure number six. One second. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so here you have plotted uh, 12 exit velocity versus heat, heat conduction. conduction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, which one? Uh, uh, this is axial and one more is radial. Is radial. Yes, sir. So from this graph, uh, what is your conclusion? If velocity increases, then what happens? Sir, yeah, it means, uh, so, so the conclusion is, uh, in the axial direction, the convective transport is uh, getting higher. Uh, so the conductive uh, conductive heat transport is getting reduced if we increase the fuel exit velocity. Okay. That is the conclusion. And uh, and the vice versa for the radial, uh, for in the radial direction, as we increase the velocity, the heat conduction is getting increased and heat convection, convected heat uh, transport is getting reduced. This will be helpful for space use? Uh, sir, uh, this can be uh, applicable because I have seen one paper uh, considering uh, the total heat conducted uh, from some of the space equipments uh, in, the, in the radial direction. They have done some analysis on that. So, uh, we, we can we can do some analysis regarding uh, the heat conducted uh, from some of the space equipments uh, when we uh, move to space or, or some somewhat like that. So which one is uh, important to you basically radial in radial direction or axial direction? Uh, uh, in space uh, in space applications, right? Yes. Uh, in space applications, I guess uh, radial is more important. Yes. So heat conduction in radial direction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So one more thing, you have considered 1.2 meter and 2.5 meter per second velocity. That is velocity in that velocity. This is exit velocity. This one. Yeah. In, point, this one is basically point. this is basically the range and the uh, the graphs. Uh, some of the graphs that I have plotted uh, on the mass conservation mass fraction analysis. That is basically on uh, methane exit flow velocity, means from the burner at which velocity methane is getting exit. And these two primary, what you have considered 1 and 2.5, yes, these sir. two are only your primary consideration for inlet velocity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, this is primary consideration for in, inlet velocity of methane. This one you are considering as zero gravity environment, means micro gravity. Yes. So, sir. But it is a diffusion, it is basically. That specimens are diffused out outward, no? Yes, yes, sir, yes. So radial direction, I think radial direction, it is much more prominent than the axial direction, no? Yes, sir. That, that, that is why I uh, pointed out that radial direction is much more prominent. But uh, but in uh, in the inlet side, suppose yes, you sir. have to maintain the proper equivalence ratio. Yes, sir. Then how you will control? Because this is inlet side. It is a premixed, not a diffusion flame, no? Sir, uh, it is uh, diffusion, not premixed flame, because uh, sir, I can show the domain. Uh, so it is basically the, uh, the here. Uh, it is basically a channel. A channel is there. From okay. here, it is get uh, methane is getting uh, ejected into the atmosphere. The atmosphere is basically air, and it is the burner. That, that point is the burner. Okay, initially only oxidizer were there. You are just injecting yes, methane, diffusing methane into it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the point. 
So you could do some, I mean, how much diffusion rate? Yes, sir. That, 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 yes, you sir. could do some grid independence, independence test. That then it will be better because in your work. Sir, I have done. Sir, I have done grid independence test of uh, of uh, discretizing the domain into two separate types of grid. Uh, first Only one is two grids you have considered, now. Yes, if sir. You, yes. If you if you make those green finer and finer and uh, these yes, things. Sir. How much convergence it is there in velocity yes, of those things yeah. you have considered there? Yes, sir. I can consider that, I, and uh, it can be done. Yeah, yes, sir. And also that, time, time, that, time independent that, study can be also done. No, that could that will improve your paper because this velocity uh, particle velocity at some particular point. Yes, but sir. you are studying if you if you check or if you perform any grid, grid independence test here, yes, then sir. it would be it would be more better. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I'll do it. I, I, I've done it for two separate bits and I'll do it for more bits. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Any other suggestion, please? Okay. If there is no more question, then we can move to the first one that paper number 1525. Uh, okay. And I would like to. Uh, so thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Jyotirmoy Banerjee, for your yes. nice presentation. Tonumoy Banerjee, for your nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, your your uh, paper writing is very good. And other next, I would like to invite Mr. Dipayan Shapui. Uh, he has uh, they have done natural convection of copper water nanofluid. In a sequence, in a square enclosure with an isothermal protruding heater. Uh, so basically, they have used a square, square enclosure. Yes. So, uh, okay. Okay, can, can I start, sir? Yeah, 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 please uh, upload your slides. Upload okay. your slides. They have done numerical computation using steam velocity formulation using Ostwald uh, D Wale model. They have used to formulate shear stress of nanofluid. Final results uh, reflected using nozzle number. So you present this one. This is uh, visible, sir, and audible. Yes, the problem. We can continue. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, my respected uh, professors and uh, all of uh, all they are present in this uh, session. Uh, so I have started uh, natural convection of nanofluids in a square enclosure. I am Deepan Shapui and have uh, completed my master's in material science from Jadavpur University. And uh, Professor Shourav Sharkar and Professor Shonindishan are my advisors and. Uh, they are from Mechanical Engineering Department of Jadavpur University. So, uh, starting from heat transfer enhancement and electronic cooling. So, uh, with the discovery of different high-level programming languages, uh, computational techniques, and commercial softwares for complex engineering design and analysis problems, there is a need for high-performance computers. So, in case uh, when uh, we are considering a high-performance computer, there are very small, small, sophisticated devices inside those computers. So they are basically heat generating. So in order uh, to cool those uh, electronic uh, circuits, so uh, you have uh, natural convection, at, which is a very most, which is the most prominent way for heat removal. And, to, uh, and for natural uh, circulation, using uh, a nano, uh, using a cooling medium, you can consider air, water, or any standard fluid. Whereas nanofluid can be also a solution for efficient cooling medium of the uh, electronic devices. Now, uh, starting with nanofluid, uh, nanofluids are basically uniform distribution of fine sized nanoparticles inside a base or radical or conventional, conventional fluid such as water, ethylene, glycol, or oil. So, applications of C, um, nanofluid includes CPU cooling refrigerants and uh, machining fluids also. 
so now uh, starting with my uh, problem so uh, i have actually considered a 2d flow geometry a square enclosure where uh, 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 yeah. an um, internal heater or uh, isothermal heater is uh, corrugated at the uh, bottom wall of that uh, geometry and uh, the top wall and the left portions of the bottom wall excluding the heater were insulated and uh, laminar flow has been considered uh, for the, for the nano fluid inside the cavity and the nano fluid considered is non uh, newtonian in nature and bosnius approximation has been considered uh, in the momentum equations in order to uh, show that gravitation the problem is actually gravity dominated gravity and buoyancy dominated now uh, starting with the objective of the work so we have in numerically investigated the protruding heater case for a non newtonian nano fluid and we have investigated how the average nacelle number or the convex natural convection is actually changing with uh, the changing rayleigh numbers and solid volume fraction or concentration of the nano fluid so now uh, starting with the features with the of the work so string function vorticity uh, formulation and finite difference method has been used as a distribution scheme and uh, thermal conductivity model by patel et al and oswald evel power law model has been used for viscosity modeling of the, uh, of that particular uh, nano fluid problem and uh, as we know that we are using uh, the viscosity model here oswald evel power law model it, act it actually includes two rheological indexes m and n m is the fluid behavior index and n is the flow consistency index and the values of those uh, Uh, indexes rheological indexes has been taken from chatra et al a numerical paper and actually uh, chatra et al uh, this paper uh, acquired the data from putra et al an experimental paper so actually the values of m and n were from an experiment so now starting uh, with the boundary conditions so this is a geometry i have considered and you can see that the left and right walls of the enclosure are symmetrically cooled and they are kept at the environmental temperature and uh, this uh, top wall is totally insulated and the uh, bottom wall portions excluding the heater are insulated and the heater surface is actually isothermally heated uh, so you can see the boundary conditions over here and uh, these are the theoretical models that we use that we have used for the nano fluid flow modeling so nano fluids actually uh, uh, the def actually the in case of governing equations the um, theoretical models are uh, the theory the flow the flow equations are quite different than the normal uh, fluid flow equations it actually includes material properties of the nano fluids uh, so we have used material properties of water and uh, solid or uh, solid copper nanoparticles and this one is the thermal conductivity model the patel model which actually includes the um, fluid diameter a fluid particle fluid molecules diameter uh, diameter of the fluid particles and the um, a particle velocity which actually includes the brownian motion of the nanoparticles inside the base fluid and uh, these are the um, effective density heat capacitance and thermal conductivity models we have used inside the equations and this one is the viscosity model uh, which i have uh, used from the chatra et al uh, paper and you can see uh, that uh, this Uh, entire model actually depends on uh, two important things uh, one is the m which is a flow um, behavior index and n is a flow consistency index and these two actually depends on the concentration of the nano fluid so if you increase the concentration of the nano fluid the flow gets viscous and uh, the value of m actually increases and n decreases simultaneously which ultimately increases the apparent viscosity of the nano fluid and this this portion actually uh, subjects to the shear strain generated during the flow process 
Now, uh, this one is a, uh, this one of the governing equations. You can see and stressed as I am considering this as a uh, uh, non Newtonian anofluid, shear theory behavior uh, is so short. So, uh, this actually, these are the shear stress tensors, and I have calculated those shear stress tensors using this technique. You can, I, I have written all those things over here, and uh, these are the shear stresses acting on different directions. You can see, and uh, as I have used the stream function and vorticity formulation, it actually eliminates the pressure gradient. So I have tra transformed these equations into non-dimensionalized equations and the modified equations you can see over here. And this one is the apparent viscosity after transformation using the uh, stream function vorticity technique. Now coming to the calculation of uh, local Nusselt numbers along the heater walls. So uh, first I have calculated the local Nusselt numbers along the heater walls and then have added those uh, uh, local Nusselt numbers using numerical integration techniques such as trapezoidal rule, uh, Simpson's third, one third rule you can consider. And the consider and the convergence criteria were set to 10 to the power minus 5 for uh, computation, uh, computation process. And a grid uh, and a, a thorough grid independence test was also performed. We found that 181 cross 181 uh, form uniform grid structure was actually uh, best for uh, to uh, continue with the computation process. And uh, for validation of uh, average natural number, we considered the Shantra numerical paper and we found that uh, the results were good with the um, valid with the mother paper. And this was a validation of the CFD code. You can see the contours are uh, almost matching and uh, lesser deviation in the uh, with the data. You can see over here. And uh, you know, these were taken at 2.5% uh, uh, concentration of nanofluid and at a value number of 20 per 6. So uh, now coming with the result portion. So uh, we have actually um, um, concentrated on uh, the change of average Nusselt number with uh, changing volume, solid volume fraction. So we have actually studied 0% concentration, then 1%, then 2.5%, then 5%. So you can see with increasing uh, concentration of the nanofluid, the average Nusselt number actually decreasing despite of increasing uh, Rayleigh numbers. So, uh, so why it is actually happening, we will be exploring in the next slide. But one thing is to be noted that with increasing Rayleigh number, for a particular Rayleigh number, with increasing volume fraction, the Nusselt number is decreasing. Whereas if you consider a constant volume fraction, constant volume fraction, then with increasing Rayleigh number, the uh, Nusselt number is actually increasing. Now uh, coming to uh, the support of the graph, a uh, graph actually, the previous graph. Uh, this is a vertical velocity profile, which has been plotted at the mid plane of the cavity as according to. So if you consider that, uh, consider at higher uh, concentration, the velocities are very low. That means uh, the as the fluid is getting viscous, the movement of the nanoparticles inside the cavity is less. Whereas at lower concentration, the velocity of the nanoparticles is comparatively high and reaching a higher velocity. Whereas in case of temperature, you can see the temperature, uh, according to this temperature profile, the width of the temperature profiles is low in case of lower volume fraction. That means the thermal temperatures are uh, adjusted to colder boundaries. Actually, the uh, thermal uh, profile is width is less so that ensures better heat transfer uh, chances so now coming to the uh, streamlines and isotherms we have represented uh, this at uh, a constant rally number as we know that with increasing rally number the buoyancy forces increases so that's why um, the um, so that's why um, actually um, the uh, flow circulation will be more, but if we, uh, but if you keep towards a higher concentration range, the flow circulation is getting uh, decreased. 
so uh, this is nothing but that uh, with the addition of high amount of nanoparticles inside the fluid the fluid is getting congested and the heat transfer is also increasing along with that the flow trans flow circulation is also decreasing and uh, if you uh, look at the isotherms also you can see that uh, at higher concentration at a high concentration actually uh, the thermal boundary layer thickness is comparatively very less is comparatively uh, very high uh, very more actually more so uh, that's why the nano the fluid can not easily actually penetrate the thermal boundaries so that's why actually lesser chances of heat transfer now uh, coming to the second one at uh, constant uh, at constant uh, concentration of 2.5% with changing Rayleigh numbers, you can see with increasing Rayleigh numbers, the flow flow circulation is increasing simultaneously. Along with that, the Rayleigh number is uh, Along with that, the um, isotherms are more getting towards the boundary, and the thickness is also very less and better chances of transfer. So. Uh, we can uh, con uh, so finally it is supporting that at a constant volume fraction with increasing Rayleigh number the heat transfer can is increasing but with increasing uh, concentrations at a constant Rayleigh number the average Nusselt number is decreasing or the heat transfer is less convective heat transfer so um, we can see from here that uh, in this case the decrease in convective heat transfer is mainly compensated by the increasing conductive heat transfer as we can see uh, as i have uh, shown that in, uh, on the partner model that uh, the, the thermal conductivity is constantly increasing in, in case of a nano fluid the uh, increasing heat transfer convective heat transfer is compensated by the conductive heat transfer so now coming to the conclusions uh, numerical investigation of heat transfer to uh, non-Newtonian copper water nanofluid has been performed. Numerical computations have been performed using the stream function vorticity formulation. And finite difference uh, method was a discretization scheme. And uh, thermal conductivity model by Patel et al. and Oswald Deville power law model has been used for viscosity modeling. And we have seen the decrease in average Nusselt numbers with increasing solid volume fraction. And these are my reference uh, for preparation of these slides. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your nice presentation, Deepayun. And uh, I, uh, this, now this uh, session is open to the audience to ask. If you have any question, please ask. From audience side, if you have any question, please ask. So I think no question is there. Dr. Sharma uh, would you like to ask any question? So it was a very good word. No question from my side. So it is a very good presentation. So well, this much. presentation, thank you, thank you. All the best. So now we will move to our next presentation. Uh, Paper, paper number TA1527, uh, Mr. Mithunjoy Kumar Shah, retrieval of 
Pritibhalo parameter in combined mode conduction radiation problem in porous ceramic matrix using artificial neural network. So, Mr. Mitunjoy. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please upload your presentation and start presenting. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, just a minute. Sir, is it um, visible? You shared your slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it is visible. Yes, sir. So now it, it is visible, sir? Yes. Sir? Yes, yes, it is visible. Oh, sir. Thank you, sir. To make it full screen. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, first of all, good afternoon. Uh, uh, good afternoon, sir, um, uh, to all the panel members uh, and all the professors uh, present here. Uh, and uh, today, uh, I will. I'm going to present this uh, my uh, presentation on the on the topic retrieval of a parameter in a conduction mode. Uh, sorry. Parameters in a combined mode conduction radiation problem in a poor ceramic mode. Sir, it is full screen. No, you go to presentation mode, F5. Yes, sir. Full screen. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. We press F5. Yeah, F5. Yeah, yeah. So, is it okay now, sir? No, not yet. Sir, I have already pressed uh, F5 and then the full mode also I am clicking from here. Sir, are you able to see my uh, cursor? Most pointer? Yes. Sir, is it showing? No, your pointer is not showing. Your slide is showing. So, sir, it, it, it is not full screen? No. No, no. Sir, uh, here uh, from my side it is showing full screen, and here uh, below there is a stop sharing and hide option also. So I don't know why some issue is. I've already tried also. Sir. Sir, so now, now is it visible? Yes. Yes, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, my topic is a retrieval of, a retrieval of parameter in a combined mode conduction radiation problem in a porous ceramic matrix using artificial neural network. So, um, for, uh, and so I'm Mirtinjay Kumar, sir, uh, from School of Mechanical Engineering. Here at Kit uh, University, Bhubaneswar. So uh, here is the outline, uh, introduction and application, formulation, result and discussion, conclusion and then references. So here is some definition of artificial neural network. So artificial neural networks (ANNs) are the programs designed to solve any problem by trying um, uh, to solve any problem by trying to mimic the structure and the function of the function of our human nervous system. So, and um, here the neural network are based on the simulated uh, neurons, which are joined together in a variety of uh, ways to form networks. So, uh, neural network uh, resemble the human brain, uh, means actually uh, it is a copy and replica of uh, how the, our brain works. So, uh, and here are the following two ways uh, that is, a, uh, a neural network acquires knowledge through learning. 
and uh, then the second point uh, on, on neural network knowledge is stored within the interconnection strength known as a synaptic weight so now now here is the basic uh, um, processes and the architecture how it works actually so in this um, here 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 this is the yes sir slides are not visible yes sir the slides are not visible not visible sir yes only front page yes yes now it is now it is answer yes. now now yes it is visible now I so this you have speech that slide show right is yes, a slide show yes sir i have clicked it is not showing sir no now sir okay what one thing you can do you simply click whatever slide you are explaining right simply yes, click that on those slides right okay so sir now it is visible ah yes oh, yes sir so, in full mode it is not showing sir i am i already been trying from one okay yes sir you should click so, that particular slide right yes sir yes sir yes sir particular slide i will click uh, okay. according to the and explain that slide okay. yes sir yes sir so now it is slide number 4 which is been shown here so here this is the basic structure of the artificial neural network and here these are the input and uh, these are the hidden layers and where where all the data are processed and then finally we get the output so after this the fifth slide and that is the application of artificial neural network so there are the some tasks to be solved by artificial neural network and that is classification oh sorry uh, classification linear nonlinear uh, and then recognition spoken words and writing and these days uh, we are uh, we we are seeing all those and also recognizing a visual object face recognition which has been successfully uh, we are seeing in uh, google photos in our google photos that how grouping are um, is being very easily done by this technique and then controlling the movement of the robot based on the self uh, perception and the other information means uh, uh, those now in a, uh, uh, so now this is a pre predicting where the moving object goes and when a robot wants to catch it and then optimization then find the shortest path for the tsp so uh, these are also used to find the shortest uh, shortest first uh, shortest shortest path like a distance like when we search on a google that how our uh, gps system so it will find the shortest distance between suppose from here bhuvaneswar from one location to another location so it will very quickly find the shortest path and then it will um, show us that these are the best route uh, that they, they are offered um, so that that was the example of this and then that and then uh, coming to my topic and that is porous ceramic matrix so uh, here the schematic of uh, the ceramic matrix uh, matrix pore forming agent bonding phases and then uh, after sintering that porous ceramic so here is air is allowed to flow through a 2d uh, rectangular porous ceramic matrix uh, with a uniform velocity and then all the governing equations are solved by the finite volume method fbm so abbreviated as fbm and to compute the temperature profile of the gases and the solid phases so uh, so uh, jumping on to the seventh uh, uh, seventh slide and here the schematic of of the problem which uh, we have been uh, taken here and this is schematic of conduction radiation problem in pcm so now uh, here in this picture uh, yeah, it has been clearly shown that uh, in this porous uh, porous matrix and uh, here the cold gas is passed and uh, and there is a heat generation zone and then after finally the hot gases are uh, being passing and these are the some uh, nomenclatures which are and these are the governing equation for the gas phase uh, and the solid phase and now 
So uh, in the eighth slide, uh, there is a boundary uh, conditions. Uh, so the boundary conditions for the gas phase bond uh, for the gas phase and the solid phase boundary conditions are uh, are here. And then uh, and then uh, first of all, the uh, first of all in this uh, uh, from here from this figure. So now uh, jumping from seven to ninth slide. So. First of all, the gas and the solid gas temperatures are given some uh, guess. Uh, and the values of uh, different parameters used in the an analysis are listed in this table one. So here, this table is given. And then the value of a temperature field are updated by solving the energy equation simultaneously uh, by the gauss Seidel method. And then after solving uh, for a few iterations, the radiative uh, information is updated by solving the radiative transfer uh, radiative transfer equation again the energy uh, equation is solved this process is repeated until the convergence is reached so in the same way after getting the good uh, agreement with the uh, with the literature uh, temperature profile for the solid and the gas phases uh, are computed for 49 different HTCs. And uh, in the ANN model, neurons are trained by using ELM algorithm. So once, uh, once the ANN model is ready, the robustness of the ANN model with ELM algorithm is analyzed. Then an unknown pair of a solid and a gas temperature is fed into the ANN model as input and ANN uh, returns back the corresponding HTC as an output. And now um, here are some comparison of results. So in this figure two, there are the comparison of results of a present direct model with the work of a Tong and Seth. So here um, the two energy two energy equations, the radiative transfer equation are solved by using Mm, FVM uh, and then the gas and the solid temperature profile obtained by FVM and uh, are validated with the numerical result available uh, in the literature nine as shown in figure two and figure two is uh, just so now here in figure two it is uh, shown uh, the results uh, that the said it ideal and the present work are being compared here with the temperature and the distance and then after getting a good agreement with the literature the temperature profile for a solid and the gas phases are computed for the 49 different hdc's so uh, here also uh, here are the some explanation of uh, the same uh, in the and uh, consequently in the next part uh, the gas and the solid temperature profile along with the corresponding stc is used as input data for training the ann models and the architecture of a ann model is shown in figure 3 so here is a figure 3 uh, and here is the whole architecture of ann model on a hidden layer so um, here, uh, here is a 600 neurons, and then there is a, in a hidden layer. In a hidden layer, there is 10 neurons, and output layer one neurons, and then after finally we we got here our we get here output heat transfer coefficient as a p2, uh, um, and then uh, so uh, as an input the gas and the solid temperature at 300 control volumes are there, and uh, and this is the architecture of NN model on a hidden layer. So, and, and once the NN model is ready, the robustness of the NN model with the AM, AM algorithm is analyzed. And then an unknown pair, then after, after doing all, again an unknown pair of a solid and the gas temperature is fed into the NN model and input. Uh, it, it is just done to analyze that uh, what we are giving of uh, what we have uh, trained the neurons actually we are getting the output according to that or not for that we are keeping this unknown pair of a solid into it and and the ann results uh, re returns back the corresponding stc as an output so uh, and um, this i have already uh, uh, discussed here the architecture and then there is an analysis uh, analysis part of the ANN model. So, 
So here uh, in this histogram of ANN model with a uh, uh, Yelium algorithm means uh, Lam Lambienberg, Marku, Marqu Marqu and uh, that is the this is the short form is uh, Yelium algorithm. So and here this is a uh, instances and um, uh, errors uh, is called targets minor targets minus outputs. So here uh, in this uh, blue. Uh, in, in this blue line, uh, that is a training uh, that that the training neurons, and uh, and this green one is a validation, and that red one is a test, and uh, that zero error line is a yellow one. So that is represented here. Uh, yeah, here is shown as in figure. So here in this figure four, you know, shown the histogram of the ANN model with a Yelium algorithm, large amount of a data falling on a zero error line. Indicates that the model is properly trained for the supplied for the supplied cases. Data falling away from the zero lines indicate uh, that the model is able to handle the new types of cases as well. It means uh, the data which we have fed already, and now it is being also able to handle the new cases and the unknown one for which the NN model is uh, not supplied with the data as input. It means kind of a small prediction, we can say, if I'm not wrong then. So, and uh, this is the figure five, uh, and uh, th this is also the analysis portion, and uh, so this is another figure of that. And figure five is the performance curve for a training, validation, and testing of artificial neural network abbreviated as ANN model with helium which again is an abbreviation uh, algorithm. So uh, now, now here is a mean mean squared error. So this, uh, and then that is a 41 epochs. So here uh, in the, in this small uh, box, uh, everything is clear that, uh, that this dotted blue line is a tra training one, train one, and then the green line is a validation this uh, red line is a test and this dotted yeah this uh, dotted uh, green line yeah uh, it is a uh, base of uh, best part of uh, that um, graph and this figure five shown the performance uh, curve of a ANN model with a ELM algorithm in ANN the total input data is divided into three parts training validation and testing so it is observed that during uh, during the training, the mean the mean squared errors MSC continuously decreasing. Thus, the training part is going in the right direction. So, and then uh, during the validation stage, the convergence is achieved at thirty fifth iteration. Thus, the parameter in the ANN such as weights and uh, biases are updated. So moving on to our uh, similar, the next slide, uh, the, here's a figure six, which is a regression analysis of ANN model with ELM algorithm. So here's the target and there's the output. And so this line are on the straight, um, um, this, this both line are, uh, are falling on the same line, this uh, uh, dotted circle around. So, so now um, the um, figure six explanation, uh, figure six, it is a clear from the regression analysis that there exists a linear relation between the input, the gas and the solid temperature profiles at the output STC of the ANN model. Then the value of a regression coefficient R is one and the solid line for the uh, fitness is also diagonal, uh, which means the model is able to establish the linear relationship between the input and the output data. Thus, present artificial neural network model is robust and could and could give correct result. So um, here in uh, uh, here, table two shows the result obtained from artificial neural uh, network model with ELM algorithm. 
so here uh, in table 2 there is a comparison of ylm and scg algorithm in a tra in training of a neurons in artificial neural network model so in a table 2 shows the result obtained from the ann model with with the ylm algorithm so the gas and the solid temperature profile corresponding to htc p2 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 is equal to 500 obtained from the direct part. We are feed into the <coughs> so uh, we're uh, we're feed into the artificial neural network model and uh, and retrieved value values of HTP uh, P2 is shown. So oh, sorry. So in so the accuracy the accuracy of the retrieved HTC heat transfer coefficient value is higher uh, sorry is high with the ann model trained by ylm algorithm so now moving on to the conclusion uh, part an artificial neural network ann model is developed by using the lambenberg marcure that ylm as a training algorithm and uh, the ann model is trained by using the data from a 2d two dimensional uh, conduction radiation problem in a porous ceramic matrix tcm the governing equations of the problem are solved by using the finite volume method fvm the temperature profile of the gas and the solid phases solid phase corresponding to the different heat transfer coil uh, heat transfer coefficients, HTCs, are used to train the ANN model. And uh, once, then after, once the uh, ANN model is developed, then an unknown temperature profile, and after it has been uh, trained already, the unknown temperature profile of the gas and the solid phase are, solid phase are fed into the artificial neural network model as an input and and the ann gives the corresponding value of htc as output the performance of performance of ylm ylm in training or uh, training of a uh, neurons is analyzed the ylm algorithm is found to be suitable for present problem as as the Retrieved value of the HTC is highly accurate. So, um, uh, so here, um, uh, thank you. My slide ends here, and uh, then, then there is a references uh, from where we have taken help. So. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for your nice presentation. Thank you, so, sir. Uh, please, now this session is open to audience. If you want to ask any question, please. If you have any question, please ask. Okay, Mrityanjay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are your objectives? Sir, uh, the basic objective of this experiment is to uh, train the artificial neural network to get the different types of result uh, by giving uh, one data and then by training it we can fit sir uh, and the con sir here at a here, here at this uh, conclusion so once the an model is developed an unknown temperature of a gas profile and the soil fields are feed into the model and then gives the corresponding value of stc and in this way uh, all so sir uh, basically sir the purpose is to 
hit the uh, to fit and train uh, neural networks so that it can uh, predict or it can give the uh, proper results for the similar uh, uh, problems. Answer uh, how uh, that uh, result, uh, what is the impact on the result? Uh, it is giving the accurate result or it is varying the results. So means sir, uh, how accurate it is to the real experimental and by training the neural network. So uh, for that purpose. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. This LM algorithm basically this is intended for minimization problem now. If, if I am not wrong, yes, sir. Uh, minimization problem. So basically, this are this thing. But what type of parameters you want to retrieve? Because your retrieval of parameter is the prime target. Yes, your, sir. Just just like we have used here the porous ceramic. So here, so here, sir. Uh, sir, here. Uh, what parameter? Uh, because it is an inverse problem, I think. Parameter retrieval means inverse problem. You are indirectly inputting some values and trying to find out some unknown parameters, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. So, yes, sir. And parameter you want to retrieve. Sir, uh, we want to retrieve that uh, the problem which has already been established uh, by establishing all um, establishing all those problems that uh, our trained artificial neural networks are giving the same result by, you know, uh, by giving um, the one data is fed, we have trained that and then another problem we are giving to that same neural network. And we are expecting that how accurate. What parameter exactly you want to be Sir, exactly in that definitely what was your target? What is your target objective? What was your the objective? Sir, uh, this one? Yes, sir. Of the objective of sir, the main objective is that uh, that to analyze that how accurate the results are coming uh, to the uh, already solved problems. Uh, suppose suppose you have done some in analysis you have done this uh, artificial neutral neural network you have put some test data and uh, you have some trained data also and some yes, test sir. data then yes, some sir. unknown value when you have put those things then yes. what type of parameters are coming on suppose you are putting some yes. temperature distribution values temperature values at some particular yes, points and yes, are you getting that inverse uh, model you are getting back that uh, heat transfer coefficient like this Yes, sir. Like that, like that, sir. So that we can understand that uh, that what data we have given and what that neurons have trained and learned from that. So according according to that, how accurate, sir? Here in how much you have means how much percentage of accuracy? Suppose some yes, point temperature you have got, how much accuracy you have achieved? Sir, here, sir, here, uh, sir, here in this in this figure. So, so sir, here, here target. So, sir, see this here is the straight line, and uh, this is the data, and uh, this is the this is the output. So, everything is in this same line. It means it is hundred percent value. Yes. No, sir. Hundred percent is comparing this data, right? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. With whom you are comparing this data? With any literature? Yes, sir. It, it is a kind. Uh, yes, sir. Literature. You should have mentioned those literature, right? Sir, here, here it is, sir. Uh, sir, here I have mentioned. Uh, because your conclusions are not reflecting any results, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Uh, Actually, sir, I'm uh, presenting this uh, uh, paper uh, and 
more authors are also uh, our professors are here so for that reason sir uh, in that depth knowledge of that equation so i am not able to sir express all those depth of that equations so that is sir okay so sir sure. okay sir sir we may move to our yes, next presenter yes, presentation the next presenter is mr debashish biswas he will present on effect of liquid bridge volume on cohesive sediment motion basically this thing uh, based on basically maybe open channel hydraulics maybe so mr debashish please continue Mr. Devashish Biswas. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes. 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 Is my screen visible? No, not yet. Just a minute. The connection is slow. Is it visible? No, no, no. Please share your slides. I'm sharing. Is it visible? No, not yet. Just a minute. I'm trying. Sure. Is it now? Yes. Is it visible? Yes. Yes. Okay. Next question. Yes. Okay, myself Devasis Bishas. Good afternoon, sir. Myself Devasis Bishas. I am going to present my present work of effect of liquid bridge volume on cohesive sediment motion. This work has been done by myself, Dr. Orijit Dutta, Dr. Sanjay Mukherjee, and Professor Ashish Modi. River bank failure is related to bank erosion. Erosion of a bank causes loss of riparian land, causes a flood defense. The cohesive sediment on the river bank has a huge effect on the river bank erosion. Ironically, even a stable river system has some eroding bank. However, the rate of rate at which the erosion occurs in stable system in general much slower or smaller compared in magnitude compared to the unstable river system. The bank erosion mechanism is very complex, and the sediment particles on the bank are subject to number of forces. Among those forces, the force of cohesion between the particles plays a significant role. In fact, it is the most influential among the, all the forces. In gen general, what happens? Now, in general, sediment particles tend to be deposited on a bed or bank surface because of gravity. Deceleration is the fluvial entrainment of the bank material by flow-induced force that act on the bank surface. And when erosion starts, now uh, when uh, to calculate the bank erosion or bank stability, escape velocity is the huge factor. What is escape velocity? Now, escape velocity of the particle, uh, escape velocity is the uh, main part uh, velocity to calculate the rate of entrainment. Escape velocity is the key parameter to quantify the bank erosion. What? Uh, here we have used truncated pyramid model for the, for the particle arrangement. Our truncated pyramid model has been based on the concept based on the fact that the particles tend to be deposited in a stable position, and that each particle will lie at the top of the two particles with small volume of water or liquid bridge between the particles. The geometry of the arrangement of the particles, their dimensions, and the parameters like interparticle distances and volume of water bridge will determine the geometry of the bank. A small gradual increase in the size of the particle is assumed as heavier and bulkier particle will be placed at the bottom and away from the bank surface. This is the particle arrangement in truncated pyramid model. Here, RS denotes the particle size and BS denotes the interparticle gap or interparticle distance between the particles. Here, we have easily seen that each and every particle will lie at the top of the two particles. Each and every particle is fly on the top of the two particles. 
the assumption the assumption which have been made for the present analysis are the particles are in spherical shape and made of isotropic material the variation of particle material or particle material density has not been considered here the radius of the particle are assumed to be same we have neglected the effect of increase uh, of particle radius in row wise and column wise the frictional force between the water and the particle is neglected the angles are evaluated based on the radius of the three neighboring particles that follows the trigonometric uh, di distribution this is the model framework which have been uh, solved for the particle 1 1 as in the previous slide you can easily see that the uh, particle 1 1 is the most vulnerable particle with respect to failure because it is the topmost and leftmost particle uh, of the bank surface so that's why the particle 1 1 has been given for the analysis here all the forces which are acting on the particle has been considered the fsp denotes the force of uh, Pore pressure force and FSB denotes cohesive force and FSB denotes the uh, weight of the sediment particle and FSR that is the resultant hydrostatic force which are acting on the particle. And here the particle point A is the most important point if we see this figure because about this point A the particle will tend to be toggle toggle up because this, this is the instantaneous center of rotation of the particle when the forces are acting. Actually, we are using different, uh, we are using the conservation of momentum, momentum uh, principle to calculate the angular acceleration. After calculating angular acceleration, we have calculated the impending acceleration, then the escape velocity of the particle. First of all, we have calculated the hydrostatic forces. The hydrostatic force, uh, we have calculated the horizontal hydrostatic force, then we have calculated the vertical hydrostatic force. And to calculate vertical hydrostatic force, again, there is two components. Uh, one is pure hydrostatic force and the uh, second part is what the second part is the weight of the fluid which is accumulated between that gap that uh, acts in downward direction so rate a uh, net hydrostatic force that will be the difference between these two after calculating that uh, vertical hydrostatic force we have uh, calculated the resultant hydrostatic force then the uh, angle which made by the resultant hydrostatic force has been calculated by the following expression the mass of the sediment particle have been calculated by the following expression for uh, where the uh, rs is the particle size or particle radius that have been chosen in the present analysis that 300 micron three different particle radius has been chosen that are 300 micron 400 micron and 500 micron and rho s is the density of the sediment particle that has been chosen as uh, 2650 newton per meter square from the st uh, standard literature sorry kg per meter cube Capillary cohesion or cohesive force between the particles. Capillary cohesion between the particles has been suggested by this by Soli et al. They have uh, developed a series of equations. The capillary cohesion that depends on so many factors. What are the factors? That, that, that depends on the uh, sigma, the uh, surface tension coefficient, that depends on the interparticle uh, distance, that depends on the radius, and again the coefficients A, S, G, S, and C, S that are variable. That again depends on the volume of uh, volume of liquid bridge volume and uh, radius and the uh, and the contact angle. Uh, here we have chosen three different uh, liquid bridge volume that are uh, 10 nanoliter, 20 nanoliter, and 30 nanoliter. Pore pressure force. The pore pressure force expression has been developed by Lycos and Liu by the following expression. They have uh, in the present study we have chosen the pore water pressure value as 10 kilopascal. And the beta uh, is the water content index angle uh, that has been chosen as 45 degree from the standard literature. Calculation of angle ex angular acceleration. After calculating all the forces, we have used the conservation of uh, conservation of angular momentum principle by applying conservation of angular momentum principle about the point A as the point A is the most vulnerable point uh, again rotation. Calculating. Uh, we have calculated first of all what now we have calculated first of all angular acceleration after calculating angular acceleration we have calculated uh impending acceleration of the particle and uh, after calculating impending acceleration we have calculated the escape velocity that is the function of impending acceleration and radius as follows <coughs> Sorry. input parameters for the calculation of escape velocity as i have already discussed the input uh, the value of in input parameters here we have chosen three different radius of the particle that are 300 micrometer 400 micrometer and 500 micrometer 
and uh, three different uh, volume uh, liquid based volume that are 20 uh, 10 nanoliter 20 nanoliter and 30 nanoliter and the variation of this among the sq velocity has been plotted though we have chosen this value from the standard li uh, literature this model has the inbuilt flexibility to differentiate or to, to integrate different uh, values of the material uh, so the, this model is material independent product, independent model result and discussion result and discussion this uh, we have uh, as i have already stated that uh, i have plotted escape velocity versus interparticle distance for both water level rising and water level falling condition for three different conditions that are 10 10 nanoliter uh, liquid base volume 20 nanoliter liquid base volume and 30 nanoliter liquid base volume from this figure it can be easily seen that influence of intergranular distance on the escape velocity is evident from all these figures. For different sizes, the grains and the volumes of the water entered between the grains. All the figures clarify that the increase in the intergranular distance escape velocity goes down linearly. It has also been seen that in the increase in the size of the grains, escape velocity falls down. If we see this and this here we have to uh, done for 400 radius and this one is for 500 radius from this we can easily see that as we increase the radius of the particular size of the particle escape velocity falls down for any size of the particle as the volume entrapped of liquid liquid increases from 10 nanoliter to 30 nanoliter escape velocity increases quantity also, the plot indicates that the escape velocity is the larger value in case of water level rises in comparison to that when the water level drops down or falls. These are the main findings of this paper. And these are the result and discussion which I have already discussed. The conclusion part. The conclusion that can be drawn from the present analysis are as follows. The intergranular distance has an adverse effect on the escape velocity owing to rise in the gap between the grains which and the bond between them due to less amount of binding forces larger size of grains have the lower escape velocity as the particle size is large so the the the, the binding force between the particle is very much small that's why the escape velocity falls down so means the particle is more more vulnerable with respect to the separation from the bank surface of the particle the entrapped volume rises the escape velocity this proves the fact that the water is a very good binding agent that binds the grains together this is why sand castle cannot be made by the dry sand it has been seen that when the water level falls the escape velocity becomes less why the when the water level falls the uh, escape velocity becomes less because the fact the momentum will be our movement will be in negative direction which will help to uh, displace the particle from the bank surface at that situation the uh, bank is more vulnerable compared to when the uh, water level is rising these are the reference which we have followed in this present analysis or in this present study thank you so thank you for professor Bishwas for your nice presentation so uh, I, I would like to ask the audience if you have any question, please ask. So if you uh, if you don't have any question, then uh, step away, away. We move, will move to our next presenter. So what we have seen here that uh, whether it water level is rising or falling, always escape velocity is uh, uh, decreasing with the increase in particle height. That thing, so it is that major notice what we have noticed here, major, major things what we have noticed here. So, next presenter is Dr. Mithun Das. Effect of different surface types of loading vessel walls on combustion performance of a domestic LPG stove. Yes. So, please, uh, Dr. Das, please upload your presentation and yeah. Into your slides. So it is very much vital things because nowadays LPG <laughs> cylinder price is getting price hike. So we have to think for how to optimize burning of these LPG cylinders, those things. So this is basically one good type of things. Uh, the presentation is visible or not? Uh, not yet, please. 
58 mm, your presentation to share you are sharing uh, hide uh, you are no 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 this is not you are yeah yeah you just you just directly you are now you are presenting uh, to everyone so directly you go to your ppt slides and present oh everything will be uh, shared you have just uh, okay 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 no that's problem that's uh, now it is okay now it is okay. Okay, okay okay thank you uh, i am mitun dash and i also a alumni of jalpaiguri community engineering college and i am uh, uh, I completed my PhD postdoc from Jadavpur University and now joined as the assistant professor in this university. Uh, today I will I will discuss the effect of different surface types of loading vessel while on the combustion performance of a domestic LPG stove. Uh, before before uh, discuss the main topic, I want to give a brief outline about the domestic cook stove. In a domestic cooking stove, uh, LPG cylinder contains 14.2 uh, kg gas and cylinder filled with about 80 to 85 percent liquid LPG, and remaining parts of the cylinder filled with uh, LPG vapor. And the pressure of the LPG vapor is near about 700 kilopascal, and the outlet pressure of the LPG cylinder is uh, about three. Kilopascal or uh, 30 millibar. And that is controlled by regulator and the outlet pressure of the cylinder. And the fuel flow, flow into the burner through the fuel injector, uh, which is defined for different burner size. For a smaller burner, the, um, uh, the uh, flow rate of the nozzle near about uh, 50 to 56 lpm and for bigger burner it is about 70 to 75 lpm and the flow rate of lpg is controlled using the regulator knob uh, then uh, after the lpg is uh, coming out from the well and bound outside of the burner top uh, with the help of a uh, second air. Mm. The, the rich fuel air mixture is bound, uh, bound outside the air. As per the uh, primary air fuel mixture is richer. In this study, uh, the different types of surface of utensils are, are considered to analyze the thermal performance of the state. In our daily life, the maximum utensils are made from different types of steel uh, or aluminum alloys. The surface types of the utensil are generally, um, generally polished, anodized, or coated. The emissivity of the surface uh, are depend on the surface types. The emissivity for lower or polished mirror finish surface and higher for other surfaces. In this study, we try to find out the best effective surface that improve the thermal efficiency. Uh, uh, yeah. um, in the earlier uh, slides, I talk about the th thermal performance or efficiency. What is the thermal performance or system thermal efficiency? Um, uh, the system thermal efficiency is defined as the heat gain by the system that's divided by total heat input to the system in the same time period, which is equal to the combustion efficiency uh, into thermal efficiency. In the water boiling test, the system thermal efficiency is defined, uh, defined by uh, heat gain by the water and vessel and uh, thermal energy input. Uh, input to the system. Here the uh, here the thermal uh, actually incomplete combustion losses are neglected as the th combustion efficiency of 
the burner is more than about 90 percent uh, in the current study uh, current study with uh, we take the 12 degree section to consider as the compressional domain because the remaining part of the system are uh, remaining parts of the system as periodically repeated. Boundary condition of these two sides of the domain taken as a periodic symmetry. And the meshing is, uh, meshing is generated uh, generated uh, in the fluid, uh, fluid domain using car cell type of mesh and the total element of the, uh, the domain near about 80,000 element for a optimum test. We also validate our uh, numerical results with the experimental setups. Um, uh, in this uh, experimental, we test the uh, water test of the uh, water boiling test uh, and we we'll find out the efficiency uh, using this formula. And we are considering different boundary condition and already I told that uh, we take a 12 degree section of the complete system, the burner hole diameter taken as uh, 1.8 millimeter and LPG contains 40% uh, methane and 60% propane. And the, uh, the air fuel mixture, um, the efficient uh, equivalence ratio is 1.8 and LPG flow rate taken as 71 LPL, LPH. And the, Wall, te wall temperature of the pan is considered uh, uh, 398 Kelvin, which is uh, which is the, taken as the nucleate boiling conditions, and the load height of the uh, of the pan vessel is taken as 18 millimeter, which is the the distance from the burner top to pan bottom, and with we take in uh, different type emissivity values for um, aluminum alloy and steels. The thermal conductivity, uh, thermal conductivity has uh, taken as a, taken as uh, the standard value of the alloys. Uh, we take the green dependence test, uh, test, test mesh type and type E3 is the optimum and give the best best value of the thermal efficiency which is also validate with the experimental values. Here we, see, uh, we uh, plot the velocity profile and, uh, and the temperature contour of the of a test case and uh, temperature is uh, more about 2000 Kelvin near, uh, near the burner port area and velocity maximum velocity of the uh, is about three meter per second near the burner port area we we taken we taken different uh, surface uh, for polish uh, polish surface and oxidized and anodized surface and different type of materials this first one is there for aluminum metal and uh, second second one is the uh, stainless steel in in the polished uh, polished surface the efficiency is lower uh, and uh, when the surface is uh, anodized or oxidized the efficiency is increased as the total heat transfer rate is uh, increased into the into the pan uh, into the loading loading vessel and similarly the uh, stainless steel uh, polished surface and uh, also low the efficiency is lower and oxidized or anodized the uh, 
efficiency is improved as the internal emissivity of the uh, oxidized or anodized surface is more than polished surface and also we, if you see the radiation heat flux through the bottom wall you see that the polished surface uh, polished surface is a radiation heat flux is very low compared to the oxidized or anodized surface and the final the conclusion the heat transferred through the oxidized and anodized surface of uh, the vessel uh, loading vessel is more compared to the polished surface and the uh, oxidized or anodized surface is the, mm, the efficiency is more than about 75 and 78 percent which is uh, normally in the traditional cookies of the efficiency near about 68 percent and then after if you use the anodized or uh, oxidized surface or teflon coated surface the increase, efficiency increase more than about 15 percent from the traditional cook stop that can be improved using the uh, if you use the anodized or uh, teflon coated surface thank you so thank you sir for your nice presentation yeah. anyone who wants to ask any question this is very vital because gas saving is very very much essential nowadays because price is getting higher and higher day by day mm. and obviously this thing what we notice that obviously polished surface having less efficient because mostly by virtue of yeah, the the obviously and then other things are there and uh, you have not analyzed with piglet number because this radiation and other things are there one parameter because convection is there no? not only radiation yeah, yeah, convection radiation uh, here also but some part is the radiation because of this yeah, reflection but almost similar the, the, here we you see the, the total heat transfer rate now this is included uh, uh, convection and radiation parts if, if you could consider the piglet number also that would be better now okay uh, this parameter if you include uh, then it would be mm -hmm. i think it is better analysis should be better, would be better. Okay, okay and any question from the audience or any person because this is very simple oh, standard water boiling test you have performed mm -hmm. and based on different uh, anodizing or coated surface you have done and that uh, and uh, just comparison basically this is a comparison mm -hmm. comparative studies okay i also recently we worked uh, we tried to modify it and we also filed uh, different patents and also improved the uh, cook stop design yeah, uh, instead of surface coating, uh, surface coating you could do some surface heat treatment the other way mm -hmm. that way also you could mm -hmm. uh, improve the efficiency Hello. any other question then next thank you sir for your nice presentation and your valuable input Mm -hmm. and it is very much essential nowadays mm -hmm. and uh, next uh, our next uh, next step forward we will move to our next presenter uh, this next presenter is miss pinky shah silt conjugate gradient algorithm so this is scg scg algorithm to train artificial neural network for parameter retrieval in combined mode conduction radiation problem in porous ceramic matrix this also conduction radiation problem in porous ceramic matrix like some paper earlier paper number 1527 this was similar work yes sir this yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, silt con yes sir i'm presenting but algorithm is slightly different algorithm is different yes sir this lm algorithm this is a cg algorithm parameter combination mode so conduction and convection combined okay please continue please yes please. sir Do I...
Is it visible, sir? Just put slide is uploading actually. So is it visible? Not yet. It is black screen only. Okay. Okay. So now, no, no, madam. Okay, I don't know what to It is four o'clock. It's oh. quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I why it is coming black. I you just uh, click present now. That one uh, bottom right one option is there. Present now. Bottom right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A window and then it is not. So now is it visible? Okay, just so click on your PPT. Is it open? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you go to double, double, double click your PPT. So PPT. Presentation mode you go on. Okay, so PPT is visible? Yes, yes, just full screen. You make it full screen. You click the presentation okay, slide and uh, make it full screen. Yes, so now? Uh, make it full screen. Yeah, yeah. Now we make it full screen presentation just directly. Okay, sir. So, uh, good, af good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Pinky Sa. I am a student of BTEC from Me uh, Mechanical Engineering, Keat University. So, my topic is the scale conjugate gradient uh, algorithm to train artificial neural network for parameter retrieval in combined mode conduction radiation problem in porous ceramic matrix. So, these are. Can you make it full screen, please? Full screen, yes, please. It is full screen. You are sharing your window, right? Oh, you are sharing your entire window. Just double click your PPT.
You are not able to see your PPT, right? Just double click your PPT. Yes, there are sir, files. I... You can see your files here. Sir, here it is opening, but I don't know why it is not visible to. So is it visible now? Yes, yes. Oh, thank yes. God. Just make it full screen. So Go to now, slideshow. Go to slideshow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. It is full screen in me. Go is to it... slideshow. Go to slideshow. Where it is written, ho oh, ha. Yes. Now it is okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So uh, these are uh, these are my outlines introduction. So moving toward this artificial neural network. So it is in uh, it is inspired from neurons of brain in living organism. Uh, it consists of interconnected sim simple unit called neurons. Uh, each each neurons perform very simple operation like sum sum and multiplications. And this is the diagram of artificial neural network. And moving toward the applications, application are like pattern recognition, pattern, uh, pattern completion, auto association, time, time series completion, and these are the applications. Uh, moving to next slide, the porous ceramic matrix. Okay, click on to the particular slide. Right. Click on to the particular slide. Yes. Okay, sir. So, uh, so uh, moving toward porous ceramic matrix, here we have uh, used a combined mode conduction radiation problem. It's considered in 2D rectangular porous ceramic matrix. And the problem are solved by using finite volume method to compute uh, temperature profile for solid and gas phases. To compute solid and gas phases, uh, there is a formula uh, which uh, this is the governing equation for gas phase and the solid phase. And here is the diagram which we have used uh, to calculate the uh, to calculate this. And for that, we have used the boundary condition. So these are these are some boundary conditions which we have applied in this experiment. And after after applying these, we found the. <clears throat> we found the energy equation uh, we solved the energy equation of solid and gas phase um, and the temperature uh, and from this the temperature for both the gas and the solid phase were assigned uh, some some gas values like we have taken some gas values and values of different parameter used for solution and after that we used gauss seidel method for you uh, for calculating the both the energy equation uh, we solved uh, it simultaneously and the value of temperature profile was updated after some iteration after some iteration the radiative information was updated by solving the radiative transfer equation again again with the help of new radiative in mm, again with the help of new radiative information the energy equation were solved to update the temperature profile of gas and the solid phase this alternating solution of the energy equation and the radiative transfer equation uh, continues till uh, convergence was reached. And after this, we did the validation of direct model. So this graph shows that this is the this is the graph which shows the validation of direct model of present work, which uh, which uh, is uh, which shows that by employing finite volume method radiative transfer equation and the two energy equation uh, were solved to generate temperature profile uh, which was gas and the solid phase after that there is more explanation using the finite volume method solution was validated with the numerical result available in literature because of high te high temperature coefficient high heat temperature coefficient between gas and the solid the temperature profile of both the temperature profile of both the phase are merged and the uh, agreement is good 
uh present uh, present problem is solved by the high expect ratio to reduce the problem of one dimension and then validate it after that the low low values of neurons is hidden uh, in hidden layer leads to poor poor training of artificial neural network and high error in retrieved value which is shown in the next diagram which is the architecture of artificial neural network model for retrieval of one parameter and and after this we did analyze the artificial neural network model in the uh, in which we have the graph uh, in which we have the histogram of ann model with S scg algorithm in this the uh, in this uh, the ann model was uh, with it shows that the algorithm was not very good but average only so uh, for that since data was falling on zero error line was less and the large amount of data was falling away from the zero line so uh, after reading this uh, we have the another curve which uh, which define the performance curves of training validation and test of ann model with scg algorithm so in this uh, in this performance curve it shows that the convergence of the validation curve is achieved at 100th iteration so uh, after uh, doing the 100th iteration we found out the uh, late convergence and and what about the late convergence so it means the under trained ann model that indicates that the result from the ann model will lack high accuracy so moving toward the next slide uh, this is the regression analysis after that uh, it is the regression analysis of the model with sdc algorithm so in this it is observed that the value of regression coefficient r was near one the ann model with sdc algorithm was not very good but still moderate accurate accuracy was expected from the ann model so in this uh, in this uh, graph it is shown that the uh, the coefficient the regression coefficient r was the near one so this graph indicates that after this moving toward the table uh, tables was that the result obtained from artificial neural network model with the sgc algorithm in this the uh, in this it shows that the gas and the solid temperature profile corresponding to htcp2 uh, which were not part of the initial input data we are fed into the ann model and retrieved the value of p2 is shown the accuracy of retrieved uh, heat transfer coefficient value is moderately good with uh, a scale conjugate gradient algorithm and after this we conclude uh, of this experiment and we got the conclusion that the ann artificial neural network model was developed to solve inverse problem involving two dimension rectangular porous ceramic matrix and then the uh, porous ceramic matrix was used for burner application the governing equation were solved by employing finite volume method and the uh, cons and the constituted the direct part of the problem after this uh, the temperature profile for gas and the solid phase were computed for various values of heat transfer coefficient and were used to train the artificial neural network. And the next are uh, a scale conjugate gradient algorithm was used to train the artificial neural network after training the unknown pair of gas and solid phase temperature profile was fed into the ALN model as input the artificial neural network give the corresponding value of heat transfer coefficient as output the accuracy of the result from artificial neural network is found to be moderate and with the very less computational resource by this i am finishing my presentation thank you and these are the references from which we took the help and we went through these uh, references so thank you so thank you, ma'am, for your nice presentation. Thank uh, you. Anyone who wants to ask any question? Okay, Pinky. Yes, sir. What is the value of that STC heat transfer coefficient? Sorry, sir. Sure. 
you have not shown the values where are the values of heat transfer co coefficient uh, sir uh, uh, so values uh, maybe i didn't insert that you have written in conclusion you have mentioned in conclusion right the yes, values sir. yes sir you have not shown your governing equations yes somewhere you have written governing equation also that finite volume this governing equation solved by employing finite volume method where are your governing equations so uh, actually this is the group project so may many part are done by the teachers uh, those are the professor of ours so in maybe that is why i am not more clear about this so actually what uh, what i have noticed i do not know because this uh, two problem you have taken one algorithm another paper uh, maybe your paper only just paper number 27 and 30 both papers you have taken one algorithm he has taken another algorithm both uh, in same problem just two uh, graphs different graphs only say this in a single paper these two things can be masked on the comparison between these two algorithms which algorithm is preferable for which purpose what is the can you tell what should be the future scope of this method this is g method so this is actually used to uh, solve the inverse problem of the that and uh, <clears throat> uh, so, so uh, to reduce the radiation problem in porous ceramic matrix. Inverse problem, okay, but if if we direct, if we if we can directly solve the direct problem, then only we can think for inverse problem, no? Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, so to reduce the radiation uh, problem in the porous ceramic matrix. So for radiation that purpose. Is loss. Minimize the heat loss. This yes, thing, sir. Okay? yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other question? Anyone, anyone wants to ask any question? Then we will next uh, just thank you, ma'am, for your nice presentation and straight forward. We will move to our last presenter, uh, Mr. Mm. Sudesh Rai. So here, Sudesh Rai, we will present on extensive literature on flow boiling. This is uh, basically this is a literature review paper. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, Mr. Trudesh Rai, please present. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Sushamun, sir. Uh, sir, sir. Uh, I think uh, Sudesh Rai is not, is there, not there. Okay, so, okay. So if others are completed, please uh, conclude, sir, please. So, let us uh, conclude here. Uh, so, all of us uh, here, uh, 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 Dr. Uh, 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 Dr. Orijit Kundu uh, Dr. Dishan Mehdi said, Dr. Mohammed Noim Hoshin said, Dr. Mukesh Sharma said, and also our presenters. So uh, we are very thankful to the organizer for arranging this type of nice uh, international conference and our students got uh, our presenters uh, we have got presenter from all over this country so uh, so uh, wish all the presenters have a great future for in their research and so we are very much thankful to the organizer for giving us this opportunity to present uh, to uh, interact with you thank you so thank I would you, like sir. to hand over my microphone to Noim Sir. Noim Sir, please, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Are you okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, everything is okay. Hello? Everything, uh, everything is completed now. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. you can send your uh, the tabulation mark sheet uh, to me either my mail or uh, whatsapp anything you want yes. okay sir thank okay. you okay so much, sir thank you uh, okay thank you sir
thank you very much thank sir thank you thank, thank you, you sir. good night for the day thank you